Sorry to say, but YouTube influencers have been lying to you for a long time. You see, they have a bias because they have a bunch of followers and they need to make sure that they are earning income. When at the end of the day, we make money here, but we donate it all to charity. So what I can tell you is my honest, unbiased opinion of how to start a business, how to be successful, and a couple other things. And I hate to say it, but the whole drop shipping thing, there is a 0.01% chance that you're gonna be successful at that. You are going up against titans in the industry that have access to much cheaper purchasing power warehouses, employees, um, long tenured history on doing drop shipping. And I've seen a lot of people come to me, ask for advice on that, um, attempt to get it started up and fail. And it's just, it's not a great strategy. Yes, there have been people that have been successful, but way too diluted of a market. I'm gonna go over the real way that I would start a business today if I started from scratch, knowing what I know now. To give you a little bit of background, in 2003, I started up SD Wheel out of my parents' apartment. And since then, I have joined with some other partners to own Fitment Industries, Custom Offsets, Trail Built, Archon, Anthem Off-Road, a bunch of other companies, seven Pet Supplies Plus stores. I have investments in solar. I have a bunch of properties, blah, 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 so on and so forth. Today, we're going to focus on starting a company, though. I get asked all the time on how people can start a business and accumulate wealth. And my first question to them is, okay, well, what's your idea? What's your app? Um, what are you going to come to market with that's different? And when I get the reply, well, I don't know. I was coming to you for that. That drives me kind of crazy because that is what separates an entrepreneur from someone that's probably not going to make it. And I don't mean that to be a jerk, but it's the truth. If you're going to come to someone and look for mentorship, you need to have that idea. That is what's going to set you apart from the rest of the people. So you need a solid product that is different from the rest. You need a solid idea as it relates to like a mobile app um, or something that will help people. You need, or you need another differentiator, like you just got to be a guy that can be the cheapest. And that's kind of like in the dropship mindset and that one is super tough um, right now today. So what I tell those people is that you either need a new product that is different from the rest. It can be just a tiny little twist on an existing product. Sometimes those do really, really well. Um, you need to do some kind of service where you really set yourself apart. So even if you're a car dealer, great. How are you gonna set yourself apart? Are you gonna, are you gonna be mobile? Okay, people do that. Are you gonna have the best possible service and be well known for that? Well, that could be a good enough differentiator. Um, or you can start like a mobile app um, uh, something along the lines of that will make people's lives easier, that will give people access or the ability to do something that they can't do now. Or kind of like the dropship methodology, you can just be the cheapest. I think that one's probably the hardest to achieve right now because there are so many people that have been in, in e-com for so long. We're going to really hone in on a few of those others today. I'd love for you guys to comment below. I will look at any and all comments that I see and I will give you my true honest advice, which might be some hard truths, um, but ask any questions that you have. Comment below. I've talked with our team here at THC and we are actually going to start a series at some point in time when we are going to build a brand new product. We're going to bring it to market. We're going to give all of our followers full insight into costs, everything that we do, our plans, our strategies. It's going to be really exciting and I'm super confident that we can make a great business out of it. Um, but subscribe below to see stuff like that and I think it'll really help you understand the full process start to finish. And we'll be sending links to this video and that video probably to a lot of people because again, I get this question asked more than any other on starting a business and how can I be successful? So a lot of you have big followers on Instagram, on Facebook. I don't really care about Facebook to be honest with you, but Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, plenty of you have big followers. If you have a thousand followers, congratulations. I think that's honestly a great achievement, right? As long as they're active users. Um, so of course you wanna leverage that as you bring a product to market. And uh, so when I sat down and talked with the Hamilton Collection crew here, we talked about doing exhaust systems. Um, I am constantly buying and modifying my vehicles, as you probably know, if you're a sub. Uh, if not, check out our other videos because we do a lot of crazy, stupid stuff with our cars. Some of it we can't say because we'll get sued. So we figured that that, that is something that we can do, we can bring to market, and we'd probably be successful with. I typically outline a timeline of things that kind of need to happen first because there are some hurdles that you have to get over first before you start anything that could dramatically change the results later on. First thing is you need a brand name and you need an attorney to do a quick trademark check on that to make sure that that brand name doesn't already exist. When I look for a new brand name, I've kind of given up on doing the very common words um, because you'll almost certainly get denied a trademark for that or the website won't be available. So we do a hodgepodge of words or we just make up our own words like with our uh, wheel line Anovia Archon um, and we even made up another line that actually did have a conflict and we had to change it uh, unfortunately. But easy to find websites for those. Almost certainly can get a quick trademark thumbs up and you can move forward with that. So that's super important. The next thing you need to do is cognitively think about any other potential hurdles that you'll find along the way. So I usually do a big brain dump of everything that needs to get done. For the exhaust, I gotta think about things like compliance and smog. I know that California is really stringent, 
but I know the other 49 states aren't quite as stringent. So I would have to look into that and make sure that we are adhering to the, the laws, right? Um, and I know for a fact I won't be able to ship any of this product into California if we do decide to do the exhaust project. In addition to the trademark and then the legal compliance, those are kind of the big ones that have to get out of the way first, right? You can't go forward with this project if you don't think you're gonna beat that. That legal compliance, I'm pretty confident that we'll be able to get over that no problem. Um, and I'm pretty confident I can come up with a name that won't infringe upon someone else's trademark. From there, I'm probably securing the domain right away. I wanna lock that up because if anybody sees that I'm, I'm launching a new exhaust called uh, Stinky Poop Exhaust, um, would that do well, you think, Natalia? Stinky Poop Exhaust? Oh, All right, cool. Um, so we're, we're launching stinkypoopexhaust.com and uh, we're gonna wanna take that up because anybody catches, if anybody catches wind from our channel, uh, they're gonna try and scoop that up, then it's gonna become a problem, I can't get my own domain, blah, blah, blah. Uh, from there, I'm also gonna lock up Instagram channel, YouTube channel, Facebook, even though, again, I really hate Facebook, and, uh, and any other social media channels, maybe TikTok, there's probably some fun stuff you can do at stinkypoopexhaust.com. Um, or that name. How are we gonna differentiate this exhaust? We're gonna make it whistle. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's another key point is differentiator, right? Um, how am I gonna be different with this exhaust? There's other great companies out there that we've used like Unobtainium for one. And so for me, if you're, first I would probably deal with super and hyper cars. Uh, second, I would do titanium, the highest quality possible exhaust with the highest quality welds. Um, and then three, of course, we're gonna look into making sure that it gets good horsepower gains and stuff like that, but we're really gonna pitch on the quality. Um, and we're really gonna pitch on the communal aspect because everybody knows the Hamilton collection is all about involving the community, sharing with the community. So we wanna make sure that we are a very communal brand and uh, very warm, welcoming, not pretentious, which is hard to do in the expensive auto parts category, to be honest with you. Now kind of becomes the building structure around it. I need to find someone that can engineer. And, and when you're early on, in on a company, it's really hard. It's really hard to start something without capital. I have the, the luxury of having some income that I can use for this, um, but you definitely have a leg down if you are starting with, with no money, candidly. I'm gonna segue into the, the no money thing, right? Not everybody can be a business owner. The, the, the younger generation, the 13 to 20s, um, yeah, you're young if you're watching this and you're in that age, compared to me at least. They all come to me and they are hyped up. They think they're gonna be business owners. And I think that's fantastic. I love hearing that. I love the energy that that, that crowd brings. But I know deep down inside that there's no way that everybody can be a business owner because there's just not, it'd be too competitive. It'd be impossible for that to happen. So um, if you're one of the majority that is in the working field, great. Like if you made it through college or if, or if you have a great job, fantastic. Like I'm proud of you. I want the best for you. But if you wanna be that guy that, that really just uh, blast through his company does really well, you need to be in the top 10%. I heard this from a, a realtor at our car community that I'm with. His name's Lee. And he said, be in the top 10%. If you're going to be in the working world, strive to have the best metrics, sell the most product, whatever you do, give it your all and be in that top 10%. The second most important thing is to make sure that you're verbal with your leadership. You need to be talking to your bosses, your leaders, and you need to be asking them what the next steps are. If you never talk to your boss or your leader, then they don't necessarily know that you're hungry. They might think that you're content where you're at. Um, but if you're in that top 10%, of course they're gonna have that conversation with you as long as you have a good attitude. And, uh, and then you need to ask, what are the next steps? Like right now I'm a, I'm a customer service rep. What's the next step for me? Is that being a customer service manager? Great. What do I need to do to become that customer service manager? Give me some objective way that I can do that. Give me some data. You know, what, how many emails per hour do I need to send? What does my quality rating have to be? How does my attendance need to look? This way when you go hit and crush all those, you can come back and say, hey, I did exactly what you told me to do. Um, I'm still performing top notch. Let's, let's evaluate that position for customer service manager. And why am I segueing into all this? Well, the further that you rise within a company, the more income you make and the greater the ability it allows you to set aside that money and then start your own venture later on. Because if you're in the top 10%, honestly, you probably have what it takes to be a business owner at the end of the day. You have that drive that is needed. Back to next steps on the stinky poo poo. Is this stinky poop or stinky poop? Oh, I already forgot to tell you. Stinkypoopexhaust.com. Um, someone's gonna take that now, I already know it. Uh, so next steps would be finding top talent. I know I wanna build a high quality exhaust. I need to find someone that is kind of a jack of all trades but really good at engineering and, uh, and using a 3D scanner. So I'm gonna determine my budget for anything that I need. I know I need a 3D scanner. I know I'm gonna need some employees. And I'll talk to you about kind of equity in my opinion on that. I've always been very stringent about holding as much equity as I can because that can really pay off later. Um, so need to go find a, a guy that's gonna use software, help design it. 
I need to go spend some good money on a 3D scanner so I can take apart vehicles, 3D scan them, help develop the system. I need to establish a relationship with someone that can build a probably a spec or a test of the system. So once it's rendered and we've built it out in a computer, I need to have a local guy come and build me a, an actual system that I can go test check for horsepower gains and hope that it achieves what we want, then have fabricators do it, right? I need to think about my marketing strategy. Um, for me, it is value propping that this is built in the USA. It is creating some awesome B-roll and video around the full process from start to finish, um, stating just that we are super quality driven. We take our time, we get the welds done right, we use the highest quality product, and we are direct to consumer. So you're buying from an e-com website that doesn't go through middlemen or wholesalers, and we are direct to you to be able to save you the most money, even though it won't necessarily be the cheapest product. Um, but the goal, is, the goal is to be that mid to high end, I think, on price, but just deliver really, really good results. And then if you have a cool logo, stinky poop exhaust might be difficult, but if you have a really cool logo that you can kind of weld onto the exhaust system or set it apart, um, I think that's super important as well. So when you're seeking employees like that engineer and you're gonna need a fabricator, you need to run really lean early on. I wore so many hats when I started up this, this wheel company at age 19. Like I brought my brother Joel on after a month and him and I did everything. We did the shipping, the customer service, vendor relationships, everything. And that's how it is when you start a business early on. The more that you can do yourself, great. The, the more lean that you can run and generate more income for yourself. Super important early on. You know that you need, I mean, theoretically, you could use an external company to come and scan your vehicle. Like if you don't have capital, I would probably be, the, the cost efficient route would be probably to have someone come or bring a vehicle. Like if I wanted to start on my LaFerrari, call it, I could bring that somewhere have it scanned, go pay a third party, maybe even overseas. There's some great overseas websites, upwork.com, even Fiverr uses a lot of people that have that experience that's really cheap. I can bring it, scan it, send them the scans, have them start engineering me stuff, um, go find a third party place that can cast or manufacture something for me, one off. And, and now I'm talking about a budget job of looking at this and it just comes down to having someone in house that can fabricate and build the exhaust. At the end of the day, with a qualified welder and someone that can bend pipe and do this, it's not a tough job for them to do that. I then need to think about things like packaging. I want really high line, awesome looking packaging that I can provide to the customer. I need to understand how I want to pitch the content if I want to do paid spend, which I would, and I need to make sure that I design that website. So I want to build a website that's very clean, easy to use, and that customers can purchase right from that. I will, I will probably be the one handling customer service because again, run lean. Make sure that you, uh, you are educated on what questions to answer, what kind of horsepower gains, um, work on install literature, um, you know, I don't want to get too micro into every little thing, but like that's a great part of that brain dump exercise where you're just writing down everything. And I usually keep uh, the notes app open on my phone when I'm thinking of content to do or other business ideas. And if I think of stuff throughout the day, I just add it in my notes. And so I might initially just have five notes, but after a week, I've bolstered that up to like 23 different things that I have to do. What is going to make or break you is going to be your marketing strategy and building that trust with the customer. I'm gonna get back to leveraging your brand, right? We are an automotive brand. We do have that leg up for us. Definitely something that helps. Um, and I think everything kind of happens for a reason. Like if we did genuinely want to start a business like this, that could have been a lot of the reason for starting the Hamilton collection, right? We definitely would leverage the collection once we've gotten far along enough in the process and we know that we have a product that can be built and that we know is a few months away, we are probably starting to tease it because the Hamilton collection is free. I can start posting stuff on there, building hype around it and just growing general awareness around it. The one mistake that I've made along the way is allowing pre-orders. That's very dangerous. Now, it doesn't mean that I wouldn't do it, but unless you know a firm freaking date for when your product's gonna be available, I would strongly advise against doing pre-orders. Even though it generates a little bit of income up front, lets you know how well your product's gonna do. If you're three or four months late, people will bash you, and those early reviews are so important uh, to how well a product is gonna do or succeed. So wait until you are 100% sure when that product's gonna be ready and deliverable. And if you're building it right in the US, you definitely have more control over the process. And then if you're, call it a month away, that's probably a good safe buffer. That's when you're gonna wanna start offering that pre-order, see how well it does, see if you need to scale up right away. If you sell you know, 23 exhaust systems on day one, great, but you're gonna need to go hire someone pretty quick to make sure that you keep up with that demand probably at that point. Or raise your prices to slow down demand. Um, that is actually a, a pretty good strategy when you're getting behind is just to raise prices to help throttle things down. Digital advertising is a very important bucket where you are, if I have that law for our exhaust, very, very small group of people. And honestly, I probably wouldn't have started with that vehicle. I'd probably start with my Ferrari 488 GTB. Thousands of those have been produced. 
versus only a few hundreds of the LaFerrari. So let's say I got a Ferrari 488 GTB exhaust. I'm gonna start targeting people that search Ferrari exhaust, 488 GTB exhaust, and create a whole media campaign around that. I'm gonna give you a 30 second marketing 101 tour real quick. You have top of funnel, that's just the way that you get people into your website, into the door, right? So that is just creating fun, engaging content. That's what it's all about. Like we go race cars, we shoot fire from our exhaust. Um, just fun stuff, right? Get people engaged. Middle of funnel is the people that have now gone to your website and maybe hung out for 30 seconds, maybe clicked on a product. Um, and so those people you're gonna spend a little bit more money on, you're gonna target them a little bit harder. Um, and then the bottom of the funnel is those people that got to the checkout, those people that added but just didn't buy, the people that lingered around on the website for a long time, that's the customer that's worth the most money to you, so you're gonna spend the most money on targeting that person and trying to get them back to that site. And then of course you're gonna be doing pay-per-click um, separately, right, for those that just search 488 GTB exhaust, um, We'll call that top of funnel as well, but there will be some spend there. And of course you can track everything, how well it converts, as long as you build your site, right? That's, that's kind of the quick marketing segment. So, so that first 30 days, you're, you're testing, changing up your, your pay-per-click, reducing spend, adding spend, adding new keywords, doing stuff like that, uh, making sure that you're just really drive, driving traffic to that website. A lot of people don't realize that the average purchase cycle is not immediate. People take weeks and weeks and weeks to purchase. So uh, look at important things like site visits. If you have very strong site visits, well, that indicates that probably in the next few weeks you're gonna have purchases. It doesn't mean that, oh great, I'm gonna expect a super busy day the next day. Then comes one of the most extremely important parts and that is making sure that your brand is extremely reputable, being honest and forthcoming. And I wanna just stress the importance of, of honesty within my organization, every company that I run. I am always upfront, very honest, even if it means I'm gonna get in trouble or even if it means that we're, we're telling the customer something didn't ship um, after we thought it really did. Um, it's really better to just deal with the issue there at hand, be honest and upfront, and, and you'll build a long-term customer for life that, that's gonna respect you for being honest, even if it was a hard truth. Extremely important to always lead with honesty no matter what, and, uh, and the customers will respect you for that. So once you're starting to actually ship product at that point, make sure that you are staffing your customer service. And again, that, I'd be the guy for that. Um, when I first started my business on eBay, funny that it was actually a drop shipping business, right? Although I went, it wasn't all drop ship. I actually stocked and bought some product pretty early on. Different times, different times. I focus most on customer service. I knew answering those questions were gonna make sure that I got positive feedback and a good rating. And I know that answering those questions was also gonna sell the most product the quickest. If someone came to me and I answered a question right away, um, and they're an engaged shopper, they're pro they might add that to their cart and buy that right away. So you need to be all over customer service, top-notch customer service. You need to make sure that you have a shipping plan all set up. Let's face it, it's not hard to ship a box of exhaust, right? It's, uh, sometimes it's big enough to require LTL, that's a separate line item on the sheet where you're setting up freight relationships, but most oftentimes you can ship these UPS, so that's another relationship that needs to be established. But pulling an exhaust system off a shelf, um, if you have adequate packaging, slapping a label on it, not difficult at the end of the day. Working your process from start to finish on making sure that that customer is emailed, um, you could even give them a little video along the way of, of the process of manufacturing that specific product. You can give them a link to how to install it. And then you can follow up when it ships um, or when it's arrived. Doing little things like that will really set your brand apart. And then being meticulous about your reviews and uh, keeping an eye on your Google, Facebook, um, any other place that uses reviews. You wanna make sure that you are super active if someone leaves you a one star or two star review. Get on top of that guy, resolve the situation, figure it out and make sure that he changes that review because in the first few months, your reputation is everything. Touching back on drop shipping, when I first started, there were not a lot of econ businesses doing what I do at all. So, I mean, I was operating out of my parents' apartment. I was going up against a few small wheel and tire shops online, but I really had no overhead. So, um, yes, doing that now, super freaking difficult. Doing it then was some great timing, in my opinion, combined with my super strong work ethic. I would just list any and all product that was available from that particular manufacturer, American Eagle Wheel. I would get their inventory, list it on eBay, and then if I sold it, great. Typically, I actually go to that local warehouse, pick up the product, bring it back, and ship it so that I can control the shipping, make sure there are no damages, make sure the part number's product was right. Um, that was that early on part of me, instinctively knowing the importance of customer service and getting stuff to people right. Um, and then later on, as I realized that I was selling a lot of the same part number and product, uh, I knew that I could buy it in bulk. I could buy 20 of them and get them a lot cheaper. So now I'm buying and stocking and shipping it to people and making more money while still controlling the experience. Um, from there, it's just scaling and adding more 
brands. There are 300 plus wheel and tire brands. So I was savage in going to other people and setting up relationships and doing my best to get their product listed, cataloged as soon as humanly possible. Because the more that I listed, the more that I sold. Different world now. There are titans out there that can sell cheaper than you can buy to the general public. I genuinely think that even if I, with my with my 20, near 20 years of knowledge, went and tried to start a new drop shipping company for an existing product, I'd have to scour to find just the right product that I can generate income on. I could sit here and talk for probably three hours on the full process. I had to touch on I th what I think were the most important bullet points. And, and we kind of did the process from inception all the way to shipping the product to the customer. From there, it is just scale, scale, scale. The more vehicle models that you can service, the more product you can put on your shelf, the more product that you're gonna sell. And the more product that you're gonna sell, the more money that you can put in that bank account.